that is the beauty of a Dobsonian. As soon as you haul it out of the garage, you start pointing to it, pointing to, pointing to targets, start observing. I don't have to turn it on. I don't have to align it. I can just start pushing at things, okay? And again, I get that Dobsonian feel. I'm touching the scope. I'm, the photons are hitting me in the eye. I'm connected to the universe, okay? If you wanted to complicate things just a little, but build up your capabilities, okay? Go to Dobsonians are fantastic, okay? Um, they are more expensive than push to. Um, you can have completely non-motorized, non-electronic uh, uh, Dobsonians where you, you have to push and guess. You can get, say, uh, Orion's got a uh, Intelliscope system where you can uh, use a computer uh, to uh, do an alignment and it will guide you. It'll tell you which, there'll be an arrow to the left or right, arrow up and down until you hit your target. And then finally, you can do a go-to, a go-to um, Dobsonian. This is an Orion XT12G. Uh, it's 12 inch, they have 10, eight. Um, they also have truss tubes. This is a solid tube. I'm gonna see if I'm in the screen here. Yes, you can see it, okay. Uh, solid tube, disadvantage of the solid tube, it's huge, okay. It does come off, unscrew this, this comes off. It's kind of manageable in two, in two. I brought the dolly so I can keep it set up in the garage. The sun goes down, drive it out here, start observing. You saw how long it took, okay? Um, Orion also has uh, XX series, which is truss, so it collapses. Skywatcher has flex tubes, which I like. Um, it's got three poles, okay? And they just slide up and down. That's my favorite. They have go-to. Um, but let me show you. So basically you're observing. You're like, hey, this is great. Saw the bright objects that I can find. Now I need to use the computer. It's really pretty simple. Turn it on. Let's see, can you see that? Eh, I don't know if you can read it. It says blah, 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 version, warning, don't look at the sun. Okay, good, good to know, thank you. Uh, enter location, uh, time zone, date, time and we're good to go daylight savings time yes or no no uh begin alignment yes or no one for yes so i'm gonna say yes okay brightest star or i can say two star alignment i'm gonna do brightest star so i'll hit enter it says what region okay that's west um let's assume i can see to the west so i will go down northeast western sky enter Given the time, date, and location, it'll say, hey, Jupiter, Jupiter is over here. Can't see it now, but basically I would, don't, and I still don't have to use any uh, motors or anything. I can just point right at Jupiter. Boom. And I'm gonna say, and then it's gonna say, what's my next star? So I went to Jupiter, I'm gonna say enter. Vega. It's going to go over to Vega, or whatever the bright star is, and I'll center that, and then I'm good to go. What's your least favorite star, Hobbs? Serious? Seriously? Dog star? Yeah. All right, so right now I'd be pointing at uh, Vega. I would, I could use my my motors to, or I can just eyeball it, push it around, center it, hit enter. Oh, it looks like I'm in the two star. It says Capella, okay? So Capella's over here. I can save time and just point in that direction, say enter. It's gonna slew there. I'll do the same thing. I will adjust it manually until it's in the crosshairs. Hit enter. Alignment successful. So now if I want to say, I'll go to Saturn. 
Uh, the nice thing about Orion, it has a tour. So if I'm not sure about the sky, I could just say tour. Deep Sky Tour, Andromeda Galaxy. Sure, enter. View object. Enter. Off it goes. Easy. Wonderfully easy. Okay. Oh, it looks like it's going straight up. Okay. Dobson's hole. That's really hard to do manually. Uh, anyway, so one of the great things about this, if you're doing outreach, this is one of my favorite things about it, is you can, you saw how I pushed it before? I don't have to worry about clutches, releasing clutches, or tightening clutches. A couple things that I don't have to worry about. It's simple. Okay. Uh, less gear. Okay. I just push it where I want. It still knows where I'm going or where I've been. This is really good when you get kids and you're doing outreach. And the kids like this, they're like, hey, I'm a little short, so I'm going to pull this down so I can get my eye there. Well, they just pulled it off target. How do I get it back on target? Push the button, enter twice. It goes right back to where it should be. So the go-to scopes by Orion, by Skywatcher, are really awesome because you, you don't need to turn them on. You don't need to align them. You can just start using them. If you want to have tracking and go to just turn it on and you saw the process i went through and once you're aligned if you want to just slew it all over here something's over there maybe maybe the iss the the uh the, the uh space station is going by you can try tracking it okay it doesn't mess up your alignment it knows where it is i say hey i want to go back to jupiter I know it's over there, so I can rough align it. Enter, oops, sorry, I was going to M31. I wanna go back to Jupiter, let's see. So I would go to planet, escape, escape. Uh, planet, I'll go to Saturn. Okay, it's gonna be centered on Saturn, it's gonna track. So the great thing about this is I have a bad habit of bringing five or six telescopes to an outreach event. Most of the time I come home with them all, but sometimes I don't. Uh, in any case, I can leave that at a target for hours. It's going to track it. Might need a little adjustment, but for the most part, if I go away for 30 minutes, come back, it's still there. Okay. Um, if the kids or the, the new folks accidentally bump this, common in outreach, just hit enter twice, it goes right back to where, where it goes. Um, so they're really great. I, I, uh, I actually bought this scope 10 years ago new, and after a couple years, for whatever reason, I was, oh, I was buying an 18 inch scope. Uh, I sold this to a gentleman who became my friend, and uh, recently he put it on sale on Craigslist, and I bought it back from him. It's, it's really great. Um, they're really, if I had one scope, a go-to dob, you know, a dob has to be a dob. Uh, just because you get a lot of mirror for the money, so you can go really deep. Um, a go-to dob is a really versatile, really complete package. Easy, convenient, powerful, precise, disadvantage. It's big, it's heavy, and it's more expensive than your completely manual dobs. So, 